Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Road. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a little grenade launcher using the first person template in Unreal Engine 5. This will be downloadable on my Patreon, uh, free for everyone to use. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to head over to the marketplace and browse permanently free collections. So the permanently free collection and look for some free asset. So I'll just get this realistic starter VFX volume for the explosion. And this is 100% free, so don't worry. And now I'll just add this to my grenade launcher FPS project, which is just a blank FPS project right now. And you'll see it adds some of these effects like so. And I'm gonna create a folder, new folder called projectile. So I'll call this projectile. Double click to open this up. And once I'm in the folder, I'm gonna right click and create a blueprint class of an actor. And I'll call this something like grenade underscore BP. Double click to open this up. And now I just want to add a static mesh and I'll drag this on top of the default scene root to get rid of the default scene root. And for the static mesh, I'll select that grenade bullet that we have. And then I also want to add a particle system. So if I go back to my realistic starter VFX volume pack, I can see under particles, let's do uh, just explosion. They are cascade. So I'm going to go back to my grenade BP and add a cascade particle system component like so. And this will spawn a smoke trail behind my grenade. And now under components, I'm going to click add and I'm going to look for radial force. So this is basically showing that everything around this will explode. I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller. So I'm going to lock the scale on the static mesh and set to something like 0.2. I don't want my grenade to be insanely big, maybe even 0.1 tiny grenade. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to add to my components is a projectile movement like so. And I'll double, I'll click on this and set the initial speed to something like 1200. And the max speed will also be 1200. And then I'm going to have rotation follows velocity. And for gravity scale, I'll do 0.5 just so it's a bit floaty. It doesn't go down as fast. I'll let this bounce. So I'll click should bounce is fine. Because most grenade launchers that I play in video games, they, they kind of bounce. They don't just stay in one place and then blow up. And I'll hit compile and save. And for the particle system, I actually need to select my cascade or my trail. I'm going to look for a smoke trail. So I'll just select the smoke underscore A. So now we can see how this looks simply by going to our, our first person and we can go over to our content. Let me close this so it's easier to follow along. So our content and then first person blueprints and then open up this BP weapon component. And now we just need to change that spawn actor over here to our grenade BP, just like that. So compile, save. Now we can head over to the map and actually test this out so far. We can head over to the map and test this out so far. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's see why is this spawning so big. And if your bullet is too big when you try it out, you can just set the scale over here to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So now when I try this out, it works. Our ball or grenade seems really floaty. I can't see the smoke trail though. So let's go ahead and fix that. It looks like the smoke trail is just really small. So it's not actually a smoke trail, but yeah, this is fine. So now let's go back into our grenade BP. I'm just going to make this particle bigger just so it's more visible. So now in the event graph, I'm going to select static mesh and then scroll down to events and on component hit, I'm going to click this plus sign. So I pretty much just want to play sound at location and I'll drag the static mesh out and get world location. And I'll plug this into the location. So in order to give this bullet um, kind of like its own lifetime, we can just add a little delay node and then play an explosion and del destroy the actor after. So on begin play, I'm just going to add a delay node. And this is just pretty much going to determine how long the bullet stands in the world for. So I'll do something like two seconds. And when this delay is completed, I want to spawn an emitter at the location of the bullet. And this will be our actual explosion. So I'm just going to look for, let's say a big explosion. The first time it may not work because it might load some textures, but the location of this will actually be the world location of our static mesh. So in order to get that, I'm going to drag out the static mesh, and then I'm going to drag this out into the event graph and look for Git world location like so. And this will give us a transform node, which returns a vector value. And I'll plug this into the location so that this emitter or this particle of our explosion will play exactly where the bullet is. And once that happens, I actually want it to fire an impulse from our radial force. So I'll drag radial force and look for 
fire impulse. So it gives us a sort of like an area of effect pushback from where this force happens or from where this explosion happens. But we haven't actually edited our radial force. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click radial force. I'm going to change the radius to 800. Impulse strength 1000 is good. And I'll tip, I'll tick this box that says impulse velocity change so that it'll affect everything in the same way. It won't take effect of mass. It won't take effect the mass of the object into effect. And now it would be good to add a sound, like some sort of a explosion sound, but I do not have that, but I will just destroy the actor. And another thing you could do is for your static mesh, you can scroll down and look for on component hit, and then you can actually drag this out and look for a play sound at location like so. And what you can do with this is play a sound where whenever it bounces. So this might sound kind of dumb, but I'll drag a static mesh out and look for get world location like so. And I'll drag, I'll put this into the location and the sound will just do this every time it bounces. It's going to sound so dumb, but just for the sake of this beginner tutorial, it's, it's fine. And actually before the out right after the fire impulse, let's do a play sound at location two. And we'll play it at the same, at the location of the static mesh. And I'll plug this in. And the sound we'll play for the um, actual explosion will be... So this is our explosion sound. And this is our bounce sound. So now when we play this, what's going to happen is we're going to shoot this gun. And it's going to play those weird sounds. And then when it explodes... See, that's the texture I was talking about. The first time, it just needs to load the texture in. And then we'll see the explosion properly. Just like that. And you can see the pushback from our character. Yeah, so the so the explosion expects us. And this is pretty much how you just make it really easy, simple grenade launcher. You can see it pushing the cubes. Holy crap. Oh. And yeah, that's how you create a very simple grenade launcher. Thanks for watching Code of the Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.